Hi friends, welcome back to my channel where we make pretty costumes and things. In today's video, I'm going to take apart the first corset I ever made and use some of the parts to make a new 1890s corset for my Nadja cosplay. This is part of my What We Do in the Shadows series here on this channel. In the last video, I made these combinations to wear underneath this corset and I've also made the Nandor the Relentless costume for my partner. My goal in this video is to make a higher quality corset using the information that I've learned over the last six years since I made the first corset. Yesterday, I took apart this gray 1890s corset that I made back in 2016 for my Vanessa Ives cosplay. I made the original corset using the black and yellow flossed corset pattern from the corset book by Jill Salen. For my original corset, I used a polyester taffeta, fusible interfacing, two layers of cotton, as well as spiral steel boning, a metal busk, and embroidered eyelets, as well as a satin ribbon for the closure in the back. I will say the fit of this corset was pretty spot on. It was always very comfortable to wear, aside from it being pretty warm. And I'm pretty sure the warmth came from the polyester fabric and the fusible interfacing and the two layers of cotton. So my fabric choice for the new corset is going to be a silk taffeta, cotill, and only one layer of cotton for the lining. I am still going to use the cording. I'm also going to still use the spiral steel boning as well as the steel busk that's at the front of the corset. I do plan to make bias tape out of leftover scraps of the silk taffeta instead of cotton just because I want, I think it'll look a little bit cleaner and nicer. And in the back, I'm going to add a piece of boning alongside the grommets where it laces up to add just a little bit more support for that closure. And instead of hand embroidering grommets, I am going to use metal grommets. There is a technique that you can do where you cover metal grommets with embroidery thread. I don't think I'm going to do that. I'm not sure if it's necessary or if it's going to add value to the corset. So we're just gonna stick to metal grommets instead. In the original corset, I also had some really weird stitch lines all over the place, around the busk, and in some areas of the busk, it was, the busk was like actually coming out. I don't think that I did as good of a job back stitching when I was installing the busk. So we're gonna definitely make sure to do that better. I'm also gonna spend a little bit more time and attention to detail on hand sewing the bias tape into the inside of the corset. Basically, some of my steel bones were coming out because I didn't do a stitch line at the bottom. I just hand sewed all of the bias tape on and it was pretty sloppy. So I think that I can keep my boning in place <laughs> or inside the corset by uh, doing a little bit better job at that aspect of it. On the bright side, we don't need to make a mock-up for this video because I, like I said, I really like the fit of the original corset. So I don't feel the need to make any adjustments to the pattern. However, the paper that my pattern is on is a bit flimsy and I think it's ripped in places. So I I want to take like a couple minutes to just transfer that over to some stronger paper so that I can have this pattern, you know, last me until the next time I decide to make it. And with that being said, let's get started.
friends so I finished up my pattern pieces yesterday so now I am going to cut them out on my coatil and my cotton and then we're gonna flat line the coatil to the taffeta I was briefly thinking about using twill tape as boning channels and not having a cotton layer but after doing some measuring I realized I don't have enough twill tape to do both a waist tape and like all the channels and everything. So while it would be a little bit of a light, lighter weight corset because I don't have so many layers of fabric by using something to create boning channels on the inside as well as covering up my edges. I don't like have enough so we're just gonna do the lining. It's really not the it's not gonna add that much extra heat or anything so when I'm places I'm always cold like I'm probably yeah I have goosebumps right now and it's 74 degrees in my house. I'm not gonna worry too much much about that. It's still going to be a great corset. Most of my corsets are bag lined anyway. It's just one of those things where if I could use a little bit less fabric, it's always nice. So today our goals, I have a little bit of a shorter day because I have somewhere to be this afternoon. So our goals today, cut all the fabric, flatline all the fabric, sew in the boning channels to the top layer. And then by the time that I've done that, I need to decide if I'm going to take all of the tape off of these boning channels, like the ends of the boning. If I'm gonna take all the tape off and plasti dip them, or if I'm just gonna leave it on. Taking this all off is gonna, well, it's actually not that much of a chore. We're still gonna decide But that was really like much easier and if I'm gonna plasti dip I need to do it to today before I want to insert it. Jesus now I'm rethinking my whole life. Hello darkness my old friend. Let's talk about flatlining. Flatlining is when you sew two pieces of fabric together to create a single section that will work as one piece. When I flatline corset pieces, I pin my cotil to my fashion layer and then cut pretty far from the edge of the cotil. Then I will base the cotil down about one quarter of an inch away from the edge of the cotil. When all of the edges are done, I will trim the fashion fabric to line up with the cotil. This pattern had cording on the front two panels of the corset and when I was flatlining my fabric, I only went up to the line I marked on the fabric where the cording should start. From there, I used my quarter inch cording and a zipper foot. I stitched down pieces of cording until there was only five eighths of an inch left from the top of the corset pattern. This did shrink the length of my fabric, but that is actually why I added five eighths of an inch seam allowance to the top and bottom instead of the quarter inch seam allowance that I had on the first corset. Okay, so basically, <laughs> I I got the cording done and that's as far as I got. I flatlined everything, everything is cut out. The cording is done. I actually forgot about the cording and then I was about to sew things together and I realized I have cording and it, it takes quite a long time. I also have a computerized sewing machine and I've been having like weird tension issues that have been really annoying and it's because I forgot to do the update. Ironically enough, I did the update and no issues. So, hey, basically I did not get nearly as far as I had hoped today, but it's looking really good. Like the, the actual cording looks way better than anything I've done so far, like cording wise. So that's pretty cool. And I'm really loving the color of it. I'm super, it's kind of like, it's really vampy. Like this is the perfect red for it. I will see you all tomorrow where we will hopefully finish the corset or at least get all the way to setting the grommets. I had to order new grommets for this because I realized I didn't have any. All right, so I will see you all tomorrow. Hi friends. So today we're gonna try to get as much of this corset done as we possibly can. My grommets are 
supposed to arrive between three and five today. I thought they were gonna come tomorrow, so now I feel kind of dumb for like taking half of the day to answer emails, but that's fine. So the first thing we're gonna do is uh, mark all of our pieces and start sewing them together. Basically, we're to making two kind of separate corsets. We're gonna do the lining, and then we're gonna do the top, the fashion fabric, and the cotill. The fashion and cotill fabric section of this has boning in it, so we have to sew boning channels into it. And then the lining is like a separate piece and then we combine the two to make one corset. I guess we're just gonna jump right in and um, get going. For boning channels, I start by pressing my seams open. I stitched these seams at 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. Once they are flat, I pin them and sew them 1 quarter of an inch from the edge of the fabric. Then I repeat the process every time I add a new panel to my corset. The purpose of waist tape is to prevent stretching and ripping of the corset at its point of highest tension. I'm using one inch wide twill tape and hand sewing it into my fashion layer of the corset since that is where the boning and cotill are. All right, so I'm still working on hand sewing the waist tape into the corset. I will have to just finish that tonight during D&D &D because I like I have to eat and then it's game time. That means I will be working on this again tomorrow. I know I was like, I'm going to finish it today. We're here. <laughs> I kind of like really love this red. I know I said that when I was working with this fabric for my Scarlet Witch costume or like my 18th century Scarlet Witch, my riding habit, but like I love it even more. And I'm just like, hold back, Casey. You do not need to buy a bunch of yards of it. There's no reason for that. Anyway, I'm just sharing that with you because I love this. And there's like several red dresses in my brain that I'm like, I would love to make that. I would love to make that. That's it for today. And I will see you all tomorrow where we're gonna finish this. There's only a few things left, but they're tedious. Like I said, corsetry isn't hard. It's just tedious. Hello friends! I apologize for my appearance the last two days. I have just been struggling on deciding what to wear each day. So like after my morning workout, I'll come up here, I'll open my closet door, I'll stand and stare at my clothes for several minutes and then just opt into wearing either my pajamas or like what I walked even the night before. And I don't know, it's just decision making is really hard right now. So I'm just being kind to myself and today I am wearing pajamas. But anyway, my grommets came in. I completely forgot I bought a grommet kit. For some reason, it's cheaper to buy a kit with lots of different color of grommets and a tool and things than it is to just buy grommets. A big reason for that is mainly because like if you buy a certain grommet, it might not fit the size or shape of the tool. And this is a big problem that I've been struggling with for like years now is grommets that fit the tools that I have. Basically, I really just need to in, like vest in a grommet press from like a company where I just keep buying the same like grommets that fit into them. But they're like a hundred bucks and I'm trying to save up for a dress form. <laughs> <laughs> the more you make things, the more you realize how many things you need. So anyway, long story longer, I have some tools and some grommets. I also finished the waist tape on the corset. I've got lining, I've got waist tape fashion-y layer, and the next step is going to be to insert the busk slash like attach the lining to the, f the main layer. I'm gonna finish this corset today. I know I said that yesterday. I know I also said that last week, you know, like a dozen times, but I'm gonna finish this corset today. So all that's left is the busk installation, the lining, binding with lace if I'm gonna do binding, and then grommets. That really isn't that much. So I think it's time to install a busk. How does that sound? I also still have, this is the boning that I'm going to use for the back. This is synthetic whalebone. 
And the reason I'm gonna be using synthetic whalebone over spiral steel is because I actually don't have any more spiral steel. I didn't purchase any for this project. This is all of the synthetic whalebone I have left. We're trying really hard to not <laughs> purchase things on a whim or like having to purchase a lot. So the only thing that I have purchased for this entire corset is this grommet kit and it only cost me $10. So to me, that is a win. Okay, so anyway, I don't know where we're going with this. I guess let's start putting the busk in. To insert the busk, I started by marking the loop side of the busk on the pinned lining and fashion fabric. Then I stitched it down, making sure to properly backstitch at each marking and pressed my seams open. And then pressed the lining to the inside where I placed the hook side of the busk. I pinned as close to the metal busk as I could and then stitched it in place with my zipper foot. From there, I use the loops to mark the hook placement, and on that side, I can actually sew the lining to the fashion layer together, and then make the markings and insert the busk hooks using an awl to mark the hole for them. So, the lining is fully in. Basically, you saw me install the busk, and that means that I brought all of my lining towards this side where the wrong sides of each piece of the corset were together. Then I went to this back panel here. This is where my grommets are gonna go. And I pressed the red, like the top side, in 5 eighths of an inch. And then I pulled my lining and lined all of my piece, all of my seams up. Like, so I like pinned here, 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 made sure they all lined up and then pinned in between them to get like an extra of lining. And then I just folded that lining under, pressed it and like made it line up with the top. Then I actually stitched just this like lining to the corset top at this back edge first, just to get it nailed down. And then I stitched 5 eighths of an inch from the top all the way around. And then same here in the, the back because I want, I need to put a piece of boning here before I add grommets. So now I'm gonna do that on the other side and then I can place my boning and grommets before trimming and doing bias. I use the lacing grid guide at one inch from Amped Atelier to mark my grommets and then installed them where I marked them. Finally, I made bias tape, putting one and a half inch strips of silk on the bias in the of each corset piece and stum folding it over. So uh, that's it. That's the making of the corset. I I really love it and I really want a gown out of this fabric and somebody stop me. <laughs> I need other things first. I really love how this turned out. The busk is still very warped. I was really hoping that it was how I installed it in the first corset, but it is totally like shaped weird. It's not like a super problem, but it, it is very difficult to get in and out of the corset via the busk. So that sucks. I think I purchased a warped busk because again, it was an issue I had in the first corset, still proceeding for this corset. I, I'm glad I did the lace. I'm really proud of the cording. It does thankfully actually fit me 
just a little bit better than the other one. I say that because the other corset had, it was like slightly too large. Uh, basically there would be times where the back would meet and it still wouldn't necessarily feel like it was on my body. And so with this one, it, it didn't meet at all, like not even close. So there was lots of room for adjustments, for things like that. So I absolutely love this corset. I absolutely love the color, the construction, all of it. I don't think I'm gonna need to make another 1890s corset ever again. I will just suffer through the difficulty with the busk. So I'm excited. Okay, so the next kind of video in the Naja series is gonna cover making a corset cover and also a bum pad. That video is not next though. I'm actually attending the Brogerton experience in, two, in a week and I'm going to try to make a gothic regency gown in a week. We'll see how that goes. I will obviously share that here. So feel free to subscribe if you would like to see that. But also I will have Nadra content again after that experience. I just, this is such a cool like opportunity and I just really want to make a gothic regency gown. I haven't seen anyone do it yet. And so I just want to do it. And I, I can't wait for you to see what I'm doing. It's so stupid and campy and kooky and all the things that I love and I'm just really excited for it. So please like if you want to see that, feel free to subscribe and you know, hit the, the bell notification or the bell icon. I'm, do I know how to do this? No, but anyway, thank you. And thanks everyone for your really encouraging words about my editing the last couple of videos. It means a lot to me that you are noticing some changes in the editing, so. Thank you. All right, that's all I have to say for this week. So I will see you in the next one. And until next time, may all your dreams come true. Eva, you just shake a shake a shaking over there. Don't need, okay. <laughs> My heart rate like jumped. Doing the waistband, not waistband. <laughs> Are you my little cow? Ooh. Are you my little cow? Yeah, come on. Now go home. Even let's go inside. He's so, he's so sorry. He's so, he's so sorry. Yeah.